You know, I do this podcast on Sunday for a reason. I want to welcome you to the Sunday podcast of the prodigal son and tell you that we want you fed. So let's see what God's word has to say today. But the Lord gave me something for today that I want to I want to expound upon because you know God's word when you look at it and you realize that what it says you're coming to a place in your life that that you're going to believe it above anything else in this world when you get that strength and that understanding that realization in your life that it can be just as much for you as it is anybody else in this world, oh, man, it, it, it'll put you on a different path. I told a guy, there's a new guy that uh, started our study with us in the jail, and first time I'd ever met him, and, and I, wanted, I wanted him to uh, understand and realize what what this what these words what this scripture means in his life and and I wanted him to build himself up because this 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 is this is not about me this is about all of us taking God's word and and hiding in it in our heart and meditating on, upon it and and renewing our minds to it but uh I told them all there and it was directed to him because they've all heard it other than him I said listen the one that you're looking in the mirror, that their opinion means more to you than anybody else's in this world. And if you will speak the truths of God's word out of your mouth so that you can hear them, so that you can hear them, it'll build faith because faith comes by hearing, hearing the word, hearing the word. I'm going I'm to bring you to a very familiar scripture, and I don't know if I've ever, I've re- ever really... Uh, talked about this scripture on this podcast or on this YouTube channel anyway, but uh, listen to what Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says. It says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. This is Paul talking to the Philippians. It says, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, and that is thinking on God's Word. You know, we talk about speaking God's Word, meditating upon God's Word, and, and coming to a place in our life that, you know, we, we are just, I mean, just eat up with what God wants us to do, what He is telling us to do. And, and when we come to know and understand that, my goodness, my goodness, if I will think on the truths of what God is saying, if I'll come to a place in my life that nothing in this world matters but what thus saith the Word of God toward the situation I'm dealing with, if I'll think on these things, think on what is honest and true and lovely and of good report. See, I know a lot of people in this world that they go out of their way to find something wrong. They go out of their way to find something that is that is uh, wrong with the situation they live in. Have you ever met someone that walks into into a place and they go to hunting something that they can they can point out that is wrong? If you're if you're that type of person, I'm gonna promise you something. If you've got that mentality about you, I'm gonna promise you something. You'll always find something to talk about. You'll always find something to to for for uh, the around in the world around you that is wrong. The, the, Satan will make sure that you find something wrong. But you know what the what Paul said, what he wanted us to do, and that is, I'm gonna read it again. It says, "Finally, my brethren." Now he was talking about people uh, in in the Philippian church. It says, "Finally, my brethren." 
Or finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are, are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And that's, that's what I'm going to urge you to do today is think on what God's Word says. Realize and understand that it's God's Word. It's God's Word that's going to bring you through. It's it's God's Word that's going to see you through. I was talking to a guy in the jail the other day, and he told me a story. He said, can I tell you something what happened to me? He's a federal inmate. They, they, they carried him from, transported him from Cleveland, Bradley County Justice Center to federal court in downtown Chattanooga. He said, I got one of the toughest judges in the federal system. He's a, he's a real tough judge. And he said, it, we had about 30 minutes uh, before, before the, uh, it wasn't really a hearing. It was just a, a meet and, and to get together with the, with the attorneys and, and let, them, let them hash out what they were going to do and how they were going to present it and meet the judge and this and that. And he said, he said they put me in a holding cell and, he said, I had about 30 minutes, and he said, fear rose up in me. Now, this, this is the key. Now, this guy's got it. I mean, he's got it. He understands. <laughs> and uh, he said, fear rose up in me. But he said, when it did, he said, he said I, I come to understand what I was supposed to do. But he said, because it just, the word just came to me. He, he said, I, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of a, of a sound mind. And he said, I, I repeated that over and over and over again for 30 minutes, sitting in there by myself, just, li- just listening to myself repeat that, that God has not given me the spirit of fear. He knew where that fear was coming from. He was meditating on it. He was thinking on what God said. He was meditating on that he did not have a spirit of fear. That spirit of fear may have rose up in him, but he cast it down. He cast it down with the truth, with the truth in God's word. He was thinking it. He he started repeating it, speaking it out of his mouth, speaking to that mountain of fear that, that wanted to rise up. And he just smiled. He said, he said, you know, when, when I got in there and they sat me down in front of that judge and he said, this guy's a, a tough judge. He's, you know, he's nothing to, 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 to be, you know, out of the way with. He said, he's tough. But he said, I had no fear. He said, I sat there and, and went through the whole process of what we were doing and come out of there feeling like, hey, you know, I've got this. God's got this. God wants to, he's working in him. I can see it. I can see God working in him. And when we come to the place, when we come to the place where we get, where we get in a place where Alan was in that, his name is Alan. And, and he, he, he said it. He said, I, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. Glory to God. God wants you to know that. He's not giving you that spirit of fear. He wants you to be thinking on things that are just and lovely and righteous, things of him. He wants you to be thinking of God's word of His Word, standing on what God's Word says, standing on what it says about the situation you're in. Because you may be in a, in a bad situation. This guy is. I mean, he's going before a federal judge that's, gonna, that's going to, you know, see the, see, oversee the trial that he's about to go to. I don't know what his, what his uh, charges are. Don't, I don't ever ask them what their charges are. I told him, I said, listen, I'm not in here to judge you. I'm in here to teach you who you are in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And if you're not born again, who you can be in Him, in Jesus Christ. And I want you to, uh, what I want to, what I do this, this video for, what I do these podcasts for, what I, what I preach for all over this, all over this world. 
I, I do this so you and, and hundreds of millions of other people that, that, that have the opportunity to listen to this, these podcasts and this YouTube channel and, and the churches that I preach for, the people that, that, are, that are listening, they have an opportunity to find out what God can do, what God can do. To meditate on those things. You know what meditate means? Meditate, meditate means to think on them. The Lord just gave me a scripture, and let me, uh, let me look it up. I wasn't planning on going here, but I think he wants me to read this. I read this a lot. I, I read it a whole lot. It's Proverbs, the fourth chapter, and the 20th through the 22nd verse. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. You know, what? God wants us to realize this. He wants us to understand that we can count on what he says. And if we will meditate on it, what does attend mean? What does it mean? It says to pay attention. Attend to my words. Count, just listen to what you're saying. Think on. You know, my wife, my wife kind of laughs at me sometimes. I, in the summertime, when I'm, when I'm uh, you know, I'm wanting to get close to God, if I'm wanting to hear from him, I go get on my tractor and say, I'm going to go mow. I go mow, I stick head, headphones in my ears, and I listen to his word. I listen to his word every day. I want his word to be in me, permeated in my in my spirit, in my heart. My I want my mind renewed to what God is saying to me. And and when I come to the place that I can be that strong, that strong in him and and come to know that my goodness, that word's there. And that word's there for a reason. That word is there so that I can come to a place and be strong in who I am in Jesus Christ and realize who I am. I think on that a lot. And that's what I'm talking about today is think on these things. What are these things? I'm going to think on what God says. I'm going to think on and I'm going to believe what he says. Just like Alan over there at the, at the jail, he, he, he said it. He said, I don't have the spirit of fear. He started speaking it. I don't have a spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. You know, we, we, can, we can spend a lot of time dwelling on fear. We can spend a lot of time dwelling on, on doubt and unbelief, but it's not going to do us a bit of good. What did four, uh, Romans 4, 20 through 22 say? Meditate on these things. Attend to God's word and meditate on them. Meditate on what he says, because that's the truth. That's what the, what, that's what the word says is the truth. That's what God wants us to realize and know and understand that we can count on. We can count on him. We can count on him. He's not a bipolar person. God's not a bipolar person. He don't wake up one morning and, and, and decide, I'm, a, I'm in a bad mood, and I'm going to make everybody's life miserable. Now, he, that ain't God. That may be a lot of religious people. That may be a lot of God's people. I know a lot of born-again people that are just plain old mean. Plain old mean at times. Why? Because they get in a bad mood. They go to feeling bad. You know, that something didn't go right, didn't go their way that day, and 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 you know, they're just just in a bad mood. And 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 when it when they become when they get in that position, you know it. But that ain't God. That may be some of His people, and I I'm gonna tell you that I've been guilty of that. I've been guilty of it. But God's not. God is not guilty of it. God wants you to understand and to know that he is for you, not against you, 100% of the time. He's there for you, and he wants you to know and understand that if you will allow him to, he'll love you, love you, 
regardless of where you stand. You know, I give these these scripture cards away, and I hope this this camera will focus in on that. But it, read that right there. You know, the top picture is a picture of what what the world thinks of God. They think he's some tyrant, some bipolar old man that can't be pleased. But really, the bottom picture is what is what he who he really is. He's that man that's that's been over, wanting wanting his children to come to him. Now that I, since I held that up, these are the cards that I have uh, printed out with all these in him scriptures on it. And if you'll send me, if you'll contact me, all my email stuff, my my contact information, my website, and everything's in the description below. If you'll contact me, I'll send you one of those. Won't cost you a thing. You can use it as a bookmark, and you can go down that list with us. Go back to June the twenty first on that list, and 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 study with us because we want you to think on these things. We want you to think on the truth. The truth in God's word, because that's what's going to bring bring you through. That's what's going to all uh, going to bring us all through, and that is what He says. What He says. What He wants us to know and understand. What what He has given us to stand in and believe. You know, I told them at the jail. You now those those guys, I I end up talking to them a lot about, you know, just about my ministry and, and, and what goes on. You know, I told them the other day, and I do, I'll preach eight, nine, ten times a week. I mean, just, just on one right after the other. And I'm not, I'm not bragging about that. I'm just, I thank God that I'm being used that way. But I told them, I said, listen, I said, if I was depending on Stacy, on my brain, and what I know, I said, I'd be in trouble. I'd be in trouble. And one guy that I grew up with, he laughs. He's like, yeah, I understand. Uh, you know, it, but it's not me. It's not me. It's he that lives in me. It's God's spirit, his Holy Spirit that lives in me, that gives me what I need to give to you and, and go about my way of, of bringing you God's word, because I want you to be strong, to be strong in what he says, not in religion, not in the things of, of, of you know, of, of what man, say, man says. You know, man's traditions makes God's word of no effect. Do you understand that? Do you realize what I'm talking about? It makes God's word of no effect. He, his traditions, man's traditions. And when we come to, to realize and understand that, look, if we will start dwelling on what God says. I told him at the jail, I said, listen, don't dwell on what I say. Dwell on what I'm pointing you to. And that is God's word, the truth in it, the truth in it. And, and, and just get hold of what God says and, and stand on it. Romans 12 and 2 said to renew your mind. Renew your mind. Be not carnally minded, but be... Let me see it. I'm going to read it for you. I don't want to cobble it up. Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You understand that? God wants you to renew your mind to what He says. To what He says. And find that perfect will. I know people today that would give about anything they've got to know the will of God. And, and I've done everything I know to do to give them the will of God. And that's His Word. Because if you'll find out what God's word says, you'll find out what he's saying about the will, his will in your life. God's word is his will in every avenue of your life. His word is your will, his will. If you, if you got a prayer request, I, 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 I invite people to send me their prayer request. You know why? Because I want to give them God's word. 
what God's Word says about that prayer request. Because when they get God's Word about that prayer request, they come to realize and to know, guess what? What His will is about that prayer request. Do you see what I'm saying? God's Word is His will. And if we'll think on the things that, that He has for us, what he has written down for us, we'll, if we will think on those things, if we'll come to realize and understand what those things are saying to us, we'll find out and get the answers to those things that we've been desiring to have for years. We've been desiring to have them for years. I struggled my entire adult life up until six or seven years ago. I was in my mid-40s before I come to realize that I didn't have to worry ever again on how God felt about me. I didn't have to worry on whether or not I was doing something right to be accepted by Him. I had I had been born again in my early 20s, but struggled my entire life because I didn't really understand and know if I if I was, you know, I was... I was torn between two opinions, whether I was going to believe what God says or whether I was going to believe what, what I, how I felt. And when I come to the conclusion that I was going to and I could believe what God's Word says about me and come to realize that what He was saying about me was a lot better than what I, how I felt about myself, when I started thinking on what God said about me, Oh, it set me free. That's the reason I've been doing these in him scripture studies for so many months now. Because when I come to the place in my life that I started believing what God had written down for me years ago, I started thinking, my goodness, I can believe this. This is true. And I can believe it for me. When I come to know and realize that and understand that, my goodness, it changed the way I looked at me. It changed the way I looked at my, my, my uh, outlook on life and the things that came against me. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's unreal what, how God can, can, can work in your life when you go to believe in Him, when you go to realizing and understanding that, my goodness, He's for you. He's for you today. That's what I want to I want you to determine and know today that he's for you, not against you. You can count on what he's doing. You can count on what he's saying to be true. You can count on him backing you up. I told him at the jail, I said, Isaiah 52 12 says the, the Lord will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. The, the King James Version says your rear reward, but, but other versions says your rear guard. In other words, God will make a way for you, and He'll watch your back while you're walking in it. You realize that? You can count on that. You can count on that. You can count on God. There's not a doubt in my mind when I come to that conclusion, come to realize that it changed me. It changed me. And now that, that we have started this In Him Scripture study and, and all these weeks have went by, you know, I've come to a place that I'm thinking, my goodness, my goodness, why didn't I know this decades ago? Why didn't I start believing this decades ago? No regret. I'm not regretting what, what has happened or the places I have been. No, I, I want you not to spend decades not knowing. That's the reason we do this podcast. That's the reason we do this YouTube channel. That's the reason I preach every time the door is open. Regardless of where I'm at, if somebody opens the door, I'm going to step through it. I'm going to give them what God has given me. I want you to understand if you will think on the truths of what God has written down for you and dwell upon them, there's nothing in this world, nothing in this world that you can't overcome. Now, you can think on that. I want you to think on that. 
I want you to realize it. Paul said it, Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Paul said it. He said he'll supply every need you've got. And if you'll believe that and stand on that, you'll see that come to pass. You say, boy, I've got some big some big needs in my life. Well, join the club. We all do. But I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to act like God's Word is true, and I'm going to speak God's Word. I'm going to speak the truth over my needs and praise Him that He's done that. Now, you may be listening to this podcast, and you may be saying, it would be wonderful to be able to stand on God's Word like some people that I know. But you may say, well, I've never been born again. I've never made Jesus Lord of of my life. If you've never done that, I've got a question to ask you today. Do you believe that Jesus is who he says he is? Do you believe God raised him from the dead on the third day to justify you? There's millions in this world that believe that. And and I want those millions to understand that they're just one step away. And that is to just make Jesus Lord of their life. Confess him as Lord. Say, Jesus, come into my heart and into my life and save me. Give me what I need for eternal life in God's kingdom, to live in eternal life in God's kingdom, to walk in eternal life in God's kingdom, to be born again. Jesus wants to save you. The Father wants to save you. He loves you, and He cares for you. He wants more than anything to see you born into the family of God, and He will. He will see you born into the family of God if you will confess Jesus as Lord of your life, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Romans uh, 10 and 9 said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says thou shalt be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He wants to. And then get in this scripture study with us. Get into this in him scripture study. Go back to June the 21st of 2021 and find out who you are. Go through this thing with us. It's free don't cost you anything. You can download these podcasts and listen to them as much as you want. I want you fed. I want you strength. And most of all, I want you born into the family of God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Glory to God. Hey, if you're listening to this podcast, go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the dash prodigalson.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God's doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do in your life. Send me those prayer requests. Like I said, I want to send you God's will on those prayer requests. I want to send you God's word on those prayer requests so you can see the answer to that prayer request. Oh, I thank God for his word. I thank God for the truth that he has written down for you and I to believe. Oh, I thank him for it today. Now, I want to take just a minute and thank all the partners. Partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping me do what God has commissioned me to do all over this world to give his word away free of charge to anybody that'll listen. Anybody that will download this podcast or this, this YouTube channel and watch it, it's free. Don't cost them anything. Thank you, partners. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, if you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Partner with us sharing these podcasts, sharing this YouTube channel, sharing this video on your social media so others can be set free. But most of all, if you've never been born again, make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. 
and then think on these things. Think on what God has written down for you to walk in, to stand in, to believe. Meditate on the truth, the truth in God's Word. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. Pray about what God would have you to do to sow into His kingdom today. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. It's the-prodigalson.com.